Hello everyone, so in this video let us talk about one more easy problem from lead code. The problem name is number of compound factors. So you are given two positive integers A and B. You just have to determine what is the count of the number of common factors between both A and B. And that's it. Uh, you have just seen for example of A is equal to 12, B is equal to 6. So you just find out the factors of 12 as well as factor of 6 and just find out the common intersection of them. You just print it out. Numbers are pretty small, 1000 only. So you could have done in a very good first. But we have to first understand what is the approach to find out the factors of the number so in that scenario it's very simple there are multiple ways you can find out that how to find out the factors so what we'll do is that we'll just do a for loop from 1 till i into i less than equal to okay what we'll do is that we'll iterate over a number let's just take an example of a number then we'll understand so let's say we have a number 12 now what we'll do we will just iterate over Okay, so the factors can be 1, 2, 3, 4, all till up to 12. Okay, but if we just do it all the check for 12, because see, A numbers are factors from 1 till 12 only. Okay, but if we just do a very brute force way of checking it till 12, it is a very, like, very brute force way. Okay, then we just on not, not optimizing on any of the time complex. Okay, in that scenario, what we'll do is that we already know that this is the theory. That the, so if let's say one of the factors is let's say 1, then other factor should be 12. Because they are in a pair. Okay. If one factor is two for this, the other pair factor should be. So if let's say and the multiplication of both of them should be equal to twelve. That's the fun part. Okay. So let's say one factor of twelve is three, so other factors should be equal to four. Okay. Now if I just start from uh, like if I now get a factor of four, then it is the other factor is three. Then they are common. Like they are just uh, like they are just repeating because I have already taken three and four. So I can directly also get from four the other factor is three. Okay, so if I take a factor of 6, the other factor should be 2, which I can directly get from here. If I know that the first factor is 6, the other factor should be 12. Like uh, 2, the other factor should be 6. I hope you get the point. So, what I'm trying to do is that I will only go to half of these factors. The other factor I can directly get that if the first factor is 1, the other factor should be multiple the next. So, both of these multiplications should be equal to 12. So, if the, the first one is 1, the other should be 12. If the first one is 2, the other should be 6. I can directly just get the n divided by this i to get the other factor. Okay, then I can directly get these factors. So I should only go to the half of these factors. Half of the factors, which means that the under root of this n. So if let's say my n is 12, so I should only go till i equal to 1 till i less than equal to under root of n. Okay, so under root equal to n, which means that if I just put under root on, on the left hand side, so it is i into i. Okay, this is just a very uh, generalized theorem. You can just find factors like this. So what I'll do is I'll just show you the code part now. I'll just do a for loop from i equal to 1 till i into i less than equal to a i plus plus so if a particular i is a factor then then a of i divided by 0 is a factor so i know that this is a particular factor so the two factors which i can directly get i and a divided by i i've told you the other one factor is i and the other factor should be divided by because of the multiplication of now i have two factors so what i can directly do is that i will push that both of these factors inside a set so this set will hold all of these factors of a particular value that is 1 or not 1 sorry the first values okay so value a so all the factors of value a are stored in this set now i will similarly do the same operation like same code okay for loop is similarly done for b as well but now in this scenario if i have a factor let's say i and b divided by i so these two factors what i'll just have to understand is that these two factors are there i just have to check that whether any of these factors also present inside the factors of a so that's why we have used a set so we just check out that whether this particular factor that is x is present inside the factor that is fact dot count. So this is just counting out that whether uh, this particular factor that we have got from B is also present inside the factors of A. So that is stored in set. So that is why we can just directly do a query for the factors of A directly, directly like this. If we are. Second thing is that the two factors can also be same. What I mean by this is let's say the factors for 4 is let's say 2 and 2. Okay, so it is like double counting, which I don't want. What I mean by this is like one factor is two, the other factors will also become two. But I just want that one of the factors. Okay, so if two is a factor, two, then again, like why I'm double counting. Okay, so what I'm just checking is that if the two factors are same, okay, then we just don't do this. If they are different, so if x and y are the two factors of let's say p, so if they are different and then y is also present inside the the, the factors of a, then, then it will be just Okay. This is just a condition in which both of these factors are same inside the B and because I'm inserting inside the A we don't care about here because it is already set it is int so uh, it will not consider here but inside this if they are same then we don't double count any factors okay? because I just want to count out single factors okay like what say like if the factor what are common factors between 
12 and 6. It is not counting two double twice because I hope one. So I just have to count it one one time only. So if it is like double time counting, then we just do it. If it is not, if x and y are not same, which means that the different uh, uh, let's say factors, then in that in that scenario, we find out that whether this factor is also present at a, uh, and then we just count. That's all logic on the code part for the third problem, or not actually like this problem as well. So if you have any doubts, you can mention in the comment box of this video. I will see you in the next one.